McCarthy-Biden debt ceiling agreement clears a significant procedural barrier in the House. President Joe Biden and House Speaker Kevin McCarthy, R. Califf, reached a debt ceiling agreement that passed a crucial test on Tuesday night, clearing the way for a House vote on the pact on Wednesday night. The implementation of that agreement was authorized by the House Rules Committee in a 7-6 vote on Tuesday night. A favorable vote wasn't certain because three of the committee's Republican members had expressed disapproval or potential resistance to the deal. The law securing the Biden-McCarthy agreement could not have been discussed on the House floor because Republicans control the Rules Committee with a 9-4 lead. If three Republicans and every Democrat had opposed it, the measure would not have passed. However, all four Democrats and all but two Republicans, Reps. Ralph Norman of South Carolina and Chip Roy of Texas, voted against it in the committee's final vote. It was able to pass as a result, setting up votes on the House floor for this Wednesday. The two parties used the hearing to point the finger at one another for rushing to extend the government's borrowing ceiling only days before it is anticipated to run out of money, even though the measure is set to pass in a bipartisan vote. Republicans' original debt limit measure, the Limit, Save, Grow Act, drew criticism from Democrats for seeking to default on America, and for the stricter labor requirements McCarthy's team secured for recipients of federal help. Republicans divided on whether the plan does enough to rein in spending applauded it and supported McCarthy's efforts to obtain modest budget reductions. This bill is smoke and mirrors, said Norman. I get why the Democrats are voting for it because they get pretty much what they want. Jason Smith, the Republican chairman of the House Ways and Means Committee, of Missouri disputed Norman's claim throughout the hearing. This bill is clearly not everything that I want by any means, I want it a lot more. But it's definitely better than the blank check debt limit that the president was pushing, Smith said. Roy referred to the estimated $2 trillion in savings from the plan as a fiction and offered a calculation that indicated the law would increase the national debt by $4 trillion. The final deal agreed over the weekend suspends the debt ceiling without a restriction until January 1, 2025, while also reducing non-defense expenditure to levels similar to fiscal 2022 restricting growth at 1% for the next two years. Additionally, it recovers some cash intended for the Internal Revenue Service and certain COVID-19 pandemic funds that were not yet spent. Legislators from both parties have put out at least 50 changes, but the Rules Committee rejected each one to maintain the terms of the agreement reached between House GOP leaders and the White House.